What the f are you doing? Are you insane? What are you doing? Who's running the show? Monkeys that are just like hitting symbols? Is that what's going on? Just a bunch of animals up there just playing with dials? Who's doing this? Who's doing this? What the f I'm losing my mind, dude. Holy. <laughs> Trump is also holding a rally, or rather a campaign town hall in La Crosse, Wisconsin. That is at 4 p.m. Pacific. But before that, Dude, let's get started. Harris and Walls are returning to the campaign trail. Uh, what's going on there? Polls are actually showing that the Harris momentum is growing. There is a post DNC bump uh, and you can see it now. Here's a Quinnipiac national poll showing Kamala Harris at 49% to Donald Trump's 40, uh, uh, Donald Trump's 48%. In their full release, Kamala Harris is up two in a multi-candidate field with RFK on the ticket, up one in a two-way. Okay, so we are going to uh, we are going to be uh, you know we're going to be we're going to be paying some some close attention to all that good stuff. Okay. Uh, anyway, what will they what will they learn from this? On that new Quinnipiac poll, forty nine percent say Trump would handle the war better than Harris. Of course, of course they are. You want to know why? Do you want to know why they say that? Because Trump keeps saying, I'm a peace candidate, okay? I'm a peace candidate, he's, and people keep hearing that he's a peace candidate. People keep hearing the point that he keeps reiterating over and over and over again, where he says, no new wars under my administration, which is obviously a lie, but it doesn't matter, okay? No new wars under my administration, and uh, is is... Obviously a lie, but it doesn't matter. People literally remember that. And then they look at like Ukraine and they attribute that to Biden. They look at, they attribute that to Biden. Kamala Harris has an opportunity to separate herself from the Biden ticket on this issue. Okay. Are Americans low key stupid? Americans are high key stupid. They are high key stupid, not low key stupid. They're stupid as Harris's message wasn't working. Yeah, I saw this. Uh, Harris kept most of Biden's team in place, but the main architect of the Biden campaign messaging strategy, Mike Donilon, has finally left and returned to the White House. So we shall see if this changes the pace at all. Okay. But you have to understand something. We're going to be looking at that Quinnipiac poll a bunch. Okay. Why wouldn't they hear Trump say that he wants Israel to finish the job? Because, and this is very important for a lot of people to understand, if you have some level of charisma, People literally make up what the policies are in terms of what their personal opinion is. And this especially works when you are not the current president. So you are not currently responsible for the onslaught. So some people look at Trump and think in their minds that he's going to be much better than Kamala Harris and Joe Biden on some and, and better in terms of like, he's going to stop the fighting. Okay. Some people look at it. And they think, oh, he's going to go extra hard and then they're going to end up, uh, you know, he's going to give Israel all the tools that Israel needs to finish the job and then the fighting is going to stop. Okay, this is a pretty normal part of politics. A lot of Americans, especially in the Republican Party, a lot of people that vote for Republicans don't actually associate the real negative consequences of the legislation that they're signing on for. This is a well-documented phenomena, okay? You need to understand this. This is something that plagues American politics, and it's something that plagues politics in general. People genuinely think, oh, I'm voting for this guy because this, 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 right? They don't really think what the, the policies are going to, to end up. They don't really consider how those policies are going to end up harming uh, uh, themselves, a great example of this is obviously on the issue of abortion. There are plenty of Republicans that voted for the Republican Party. They didn't really care about abortion rights being restricted. And now they're like, oh my God, this is actually devastating. What the Because all of a sudden, there's no way you can message out of it. Everybody now knows you are responsible for all of the women in places like Texas, in places like Ohio, that can't get ectopic pregnancies dealt with. Uh, the medical procedure is an abortion. And, and now they're in a panic state because Republicans shut that access off. They are responsible for it. They have to live with that reality. Do you understand? Yeah, Missouri Amendment 3, enshrine a right to an abortion. Yes, 
No, 34%. Yes, 52%. President uh, Donald Trump, 54%. Kamala Harris, 41%. Okay? Josh Hawley, 53%. Lucas Kunse, 42%. So you need to understand something. Okay? You need to understand something. Americans do not make... Americans do not make smart choices when they are voting. Part of that reason is because neither party truly represents their best interests, so politics just gets divvied out to team sports. A lot of people think, oh, I'm voting on harm reduction on the Democratic Party side, but ultimately they're just voting on team sports. Harm reduction is just a uh, layer of moralizing that you are tacking on to why you're making the decision that you're making. So in a way, it's both the people that don't vote, and it's also somewhat the smartest people that don't end up voting, even if they recognize why they're not voting or, or uh, why, even if they recognize it or not, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, like, I wish more people would get activated to go out and vote, but the reality of the matter is until either side, and this is specifically the Democrats I'm talking about here, okay, until the Democrats actually actively communicate to broad majorities of the public that if voting for the Democrats will actually genuinely improve their lives, improve their material conditions in a meaningful way, and that the Democrats are actually on board with genuinely improving their lives in a meaningful way. Easy to communicate, easy to understand, responsive policies, right? Until that happens, most people are not going to fucking go out and vote, okay? Idea of reserve is mental health officer ousted from role after social media comments. Uh, how do you have so many viewers while having so many... L takes what's your secret I'm hot that's what it is yeah it's just like I think my secret is um what you consider to be an L take three months down the line you will consider to be a W take that you thought about all along except right now you're resistant and hostile to it but when it does become the reality okay because oftentimes I am right simply too early okay there are times when I'm wrong of course I'm human being after all but oftentimes I'm right. I'm just too early to the game. And uh, most people are inherently hostile to change, inherently hostile to and, and resist any sort of like uh, change in communication. So they just operate on vibes. And then 12 months later, suddenly hate you and splinter off into a hater community. Of course, of course. Yeah, I suspect this is already a person there. You know, good response. I mean, you're pro-Palestine, it seems. So I don't know why you're uh, what you're considering to be an L take here. And you're anti-smoking. As am I. So I don't know what's going on here. All right, but let's get back to it. Trump is a dream for the status quo. Every push to make the liberal pass common good policies turned down by if you don't vote for us, vote for him. It's the same in France as 2012. Yeah. Do you think voting because of harm reduction is bad? I don't think voting because of harm reduction is bad. I do think, however, that most people don't vote on that basis. And the Democrats don't do enough to actually engage in harm reduction. Uh, the the re harm that they're reducing gets smaller and smaller every election cycle. And that is partially because harm reduction is the only advocacy that they engage in within their own base. And that's really stupid because you're just missing a massive, massive amount of people that you could be uh, activating, bringing out to the polls, you know? I mean, I don't think that's true with respect to labor or trans LGBT rights. Yeah, again, notice how you're not saying that about immigrants right now, because the Democrats have dropped that from their policies, right? So like last election cycle, you would say that, you would say uh, trans and LGBT rights, and then you would also say uh, immigrants, right? Like Republicans are doing so, uh, Republicans are doing horribly poor things with immigrants, like Democrats will protect immigrants. Notice how you don't say that anymore, because they shut that communication off, because they themselves are now pushing for a right-wing immigration bill. So every election cycle, they just like pick and choose another thing that they are going to capitulate to the right on. And I personally find that to be unconscionable. I personally find that to be immoral. And I also personally find that to be disastrous. Um, notice how you're not also saying, well, what about Muslims, right? Yeah. What about Muslims? Because that was another good one that you could use if you only cared about harm reduction, right? Oh, Trump will be so much worse on Muslims. Trump will be so much worse on immigrants. Okay, but you, you're that doesn't mean that this gives you an opportunity to be harmful yourself, right? So that's it. Um, there is obviously issues where the uh, the Democrats are, are genuinely better than the Republicans on. That's abortion and protecting abortion, protecting the medical decisions that people make. And that's a huge issue. Problem is, you know, when you got Trump at the top of that ticket, it seems to me like even, I mean, obviously in a place like Missouri, people are still voting for abortion, 
but also simultaneously voting for Donald Trump. Okay. Chomsky made a good point about voting and that's something you just do. And then you get back to the real work of organizing and growing a movement. Yeah. It's the voting is still the least consequential, most significant thing you can do for sure. And I understand the argument that Chomsky is making, even though he is 850 years old, he was there when democracy was invented. He knows a thing or two about that sort of thing, right? However, having said that, a lot of people don't operate on that basis. This is what I'm simply stating. It's like harm reduction, harm reduction, harm reduction over and over again is not going to carry you across the finish line, okay? Harm reduction didn't carry the Democrats across the finish line because you can't out-compete. You can't out-harm reduction argument your way out of a bad candidate or a bad, uh, a, a bad campaign. Hillary Clinton demonstrated that reality, right? So that's, that's precisely the reason why I always say like, you know, you could say harm reduction all day, every day. This is not one of those communities where that's going to fly in general because I'm analyzing the actual policies and the impact that those policies have on people's lives. Um, I, uh, I, I, I think that the Democratic Party should drop that as well. They dropped the identity politics stuff, and I really do hope that they'll drop this eventually as well because it would be a significantly better way to argue, a significantly better mechanism to, to draw out uh, more support, more popular support, get more people to vote for you in states where people have completely lost confidence in you, the Democratic Party, if you were to actually advocate for direct policies that help people's lives, okay? The direct policies that help people improve their... That's what politics is. What are you going to give me at the end of the day is a real simple question that people must ask. And the Democratic Party's response can't simply be, well, we're better than the Republicans, marginally better than the Republicans. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's not going to work. And it doesn't work. Demonstrably, it doesn't work. I don't know the reason why they do this, but Harris is gaining on all the good polls. And then there are right-wing pollsters deciding if the average is Lamau. And then Emerson with a random grenade. Yeah, the thing is... Uh, Kamala Harris gaining on all of these good polls simply does not carry her across the finish line. If you recall, these are still within the margin of error. That's number one. It just simply shows that momentum is on her, uh, is, is favoring her at this time. None of these polls actually show that Kamala Harris is definitely winning tomorrow. Okay. This is something that you have to remember. Now, obviously post-convention bumps don't necessarily immediately lock you in. If that was the case, the caucus would have been president. You know what I mean? Like, think he got like a 12 point bump after the convention obviously didn't fucking matter so even with all of that even with all of the like i i obviously do care about polling i i'm not gonna sit here and be like oh it's 2020 polls were misleading i'm not gonna say that uh 2016 was the last time that polls were like definitely off base this shows momentum that's a good thing however even if they showed a massive increase, right, it post convention, for example, it still wouldn't necessarily, uh, it still wouldn't necessarily mean all that much in terms of like what things may look like come November. Okay, I am a poll believer, uh, as in like I, I do look at polls. I, uh, I look at uh, and analyze polls on a regular basis. Come the uh, when the election cycle comes around. But having said that. <sighs> Um, you know, it's not the end all be all. There are examples where people are doing well post convention, get a big bump after convention, and then they end up losing. There are examples where, uh, obviously, uh, you don't see a massive bump post uh, the convention and you uh, end up winning. So, why do you think so many down ballot Democrats are polling so much better than Harris in the presidential race? Is that the down ballot Republicans are just worse? In some instances, that is the answer. There's a lot of untested or genuine failures on the Republican side untested in the sense that like they have no uh long-term tenure that you can point to like carrie lake who is a freak and a weirdo and like she's gonna get absolutely destroyed in uh in in arizona you have that guy the the troop that was exploded in uh, nevada for example who's not even from nevada but he's like running uh like you have a lot of people on the republican side that are untested that uh, don't have any sort of like policy that they can point to or don't have any tenure that they can point to. They don't really have like a built-in infrastructure for canvassing and they're just running and Trump likes them because they're freaks, right? And that is actually part of the reason why in some of these races, the down ballot races are actually performing better than the top of the ticket. Having said that, however, having said that, however, okay, the other reason is, in my opinion, the other reason is because the other reason is because the the Kamala Harris campaign is not doing a decent enough job separating themselves from the Joe Biden 
uh, campaign. They have done that with like pricing, right? They've done that with grocery prices, but they haven't done a clean break on a lot of other stuff, including, but not limited to, okay? There are still a lot of things that are unpopular with the Biden administration that the Harris ticket has not actually communicated their way out of. I personally suspect the immigration part of the equation is also a big deal. But, of course, polling doesn't show that. Well, it's because it's an untested narrative, because the Republicans have never countermessaged or even tried to drop it. Now, of course, that is an issue. They have not tried it, and it might be too late by the time they finally come to their senses, okay? When they finally come to their senses and decide, like, maybe we shouldn't be running in this, like, super right-wing immigration policy, it's probably going to be far too late. So... We'll see. Okay. Uh, Nate Silver has an interesting take. Latest Nate Silver forecast. Trump's chances of winning are up plus five electoral votes uh, with uh, Harris is at 272. Trump 266. I don't. What? Who is favored to win the presidency? Chance each candidate has of winning the electoral college or the popular vote in 2024 presidential election and our best predictions on the outcome based on 40,000 simulations of our model. Harris's electoral college uh, victory probability is at 47.3%. Trump is at 52.4%. Um, but the popular vote probability, Harris is at 63.8%. The predicted electoral college, uh, the predicted electoral votes that she arrives at is 272. The predicted popular vote share is at 50.3%. Wait, I don't understand how this works, though. Check his PA analysis. It's in one of your tabs. Yeah, I want to see the... I want to see what Pennsylvania looks like, because this race is going to come down to chance of winning is based on Nate Silver's model. Predicted electoral votes is based on just polls. His model thinks Kamala should have a, should have had a much larger lead in PA than polls are showing. It's cooking her in his model. Yeah. I think this race is going to obviously come back. Uh, this race is going to come down to Pennsylvania and obviously Trump knows that um, they're playing defense in places like North Carolina. They're pumping a little bit in places like Georgia, but ultimately, I think it's just, you know, Pennsylvania is the major part of this problem. And um, she's showing another problem. It's been a while since we've seen a poll showing Harris leading in Pennsylvania. High quality poll showing Harris ahead in PA would make a big difference right now. Weird update today. Harris ticked up slightly in our national polling average, but lost ground in our forecast and is now uh, less than 50% against Donald Trump. One reason is that the model's convention balance adjustment, which affects the forecast, but not the average. There's a large population of Arabs and Muslims in PA that could lose it. 170,000 registered Muslim voters. Kamala Harris needs every vote she can possibly pick up. And what I find very frustrating about this, beyond the fact that every time I say at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break, you guys perk up uh, and it annoys me and it like up my flow, even though there is a three minute ad break at the top of the hour. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $6 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account when you get one free prime subscription a month you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky here's a three minute ad break now what's really endlessly frustrating about this what's endlessly frustrating about the kamala harris campaign strategy so far is that there are votes waiting to be picked up there are votes waiting to be picked up there is momentum that they can add to the vibes campaign however however the areas that they are going after where they are going where they're going after the people that they're trying to win over to their side are unimaginably stupid one example i will give you is this okay i saw this uh earlier the other uh i saw this earlier today let me see if i can find it okay let's see let's see let's see let's see there's one thing that i there's one thing i wanted to show you where the f is it hold on where the f is it god damn it oh here this is the this is the what i wanted to show you looks like some marginal voters don't have to try very hard to get meetings, huh? Says Ed and Germentum. Here it is. Haley Voters Working Group. Thank you to the Harris campaign for joining our group for the third time tonight. We've appreciated your engagement and the time you've shared with us respectfully discussing how to win over Haley voters on the fence. I am losing my mind. What are you doing? What are you doing? There are hundreds of thousands of people in every single state that you are currently either barely defeating Donald Trump on or losing to Donald Trump on, depending on which poll you're looking at. And they are straight up going after a group of like 50 voters of a candidate who has endorsed Donald Trump. Please stop doing this. What the f are you doing? Are you insane? What are you doing? 
Who's running the show? Monkeys that are just like hitting symbols? Is that what's going on? Just a bunch of animals up there just playing with dials? Who's doing this? Who's doing this? What the? I'm losing my mind, dude. Holy. And it's additionally strange because, and I will keep repeating this over and over and over again, the original momentum that happened, Biden losing the election to Donald Trump, to Kamala Harris having a chance of defeating Donald Trump, that only happened because they did progressive, okay? They responded to public pressure, and lo and behold, people like that sort of thing, okay? Having, making it seem as though you have a commitment to the democratic process, turns out, makes people feel pretty enthusiastic, okay? What the f are we doing here? This is old school ass. I want to lose Kaya Place. You know better. You're looking back at me right now, thinking you did some sh Okay, good girl. The only reason they're doing this is because the coalition will hold once, then it gets worse, and two, we go to with Iran and China, I guarantee it. Democrats care more about capitalism than winning elections, nothing new here. No, dude, that's crazy. Okay, that's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. Also, I'm talking to the voters here. I, like, I just don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, how, how do you end up doing something? How do you end up making decisions that actually are bangers, okay? And you immediately get this big boost, you get this response. So many people doubt your ability to finally like take this bold step and actually get like noticeable and immediate, uh, noticeable and immediate uh, uh, changes in the way that people view the campaign. And then you just go, okay, we're done. We did enough. Like, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. This does not mean that the Kamala Harris campaign is going to lose. Okay. I'm not saying that at all. They are doing very well so far. Okay. They're doing very well so far, but that can change, okay? While they are on, while they have the foot on the gas, they should be pumping it even harder instead of trying to desperately cut away at this momentum. Walls is outstanding, best VP pick of my life. I know, that's why I don't get it. I don't get it. Why the f did you do that? If they had chosen, if they had went with Josh Shapiro, okay, I'd be like, this is classic Democratic Party, you know? Classic. They went with the, what they perceive is the safe choice, even though it's not a safe choice, but what they perceive was like the calculated safe choice, okay? Uh, somewhat conservative governor in a key state that they have to win. It's a must-win state. And, and they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They went with Waltz, which locked them into at least messaging around progressive policies. So I don't understand why the f they're like not continuing along with that, like, with that agenda that's what don't you get them's want to win but in a certain way because they run by their donors i i it's fine okay modeling your election strategy off of likely republican voters is insane to me okay if kamala loses her followers will 100 percent blame arabs and muslims they'll take off the mask and start saying the most dehumanizing you've ever heard i can already feel it i mean they're already saying that they didn't pick the guy for vp who was massively popular in pennsylvania yeah dude you're right you're right, dude. Massively popular in Pennsylvania. Like, he's popular, dude. I wouldn't go as far as to say he's massively popular. He ran against a freak. Hassan really thinks everybody's obsessed with... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm losing my mind. Please. This is not what I'm saying at all. You guys are so annoying. Because you don't care about it, okay? I care about it. But that's not the argument that I'm making. There are people who care that would be on board with the ticket. But that's not the only thing that I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about like moderating your messaging on the issue of dealing with the economy. You know what I mean? I wasn't even talking about in this situation. You're the one who brought it up because liberals are gross. Okay. Just such little freaks who just desperately want to lose. And in that stupid death spiral, they want to point their fingers at like other people. Oh, it must be the Muslims. It must be shut the up. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. That strategy worked so well for the Dems last election cycle that Trump gained 20 million votes. Yeah, I'm like, I, I'll literally be talking about healthcare. I'll, I'll be talking about like genuinely actively communicating policy prescriptions to people's like genuine people's problems that they perceive in their day to day lives and like running a campaign on issues like that. Okay. Not like a boring, annoying, nerdy Elizabeth style campaign, but like a closer to a Bernie, like a populist campaign where you're like, People are suffering. We're going to solve it, okay? We're going to put more bread uh, on your table. 
We're going to make sure that it's easier for you to have a roof over your head. We're going to solve these issues. Okay. If they did that, people would respond to it. People would respond positively to it. And it's crazy to me that like there's Democrats in here who turn around and go, oh, oh, actually, um, you think everybody cares about. First of all, why are you openly admitting that like Americans are selfish, bloodthirsty losers when there's a goddamn happening and they don't give up? Secondly, you're objectively incorrect. Obviously, it's not the most salient issue for a lot of Americans, but plenty of Americans, like broad majorities of Americans, want to stop the fighting in, okay? So shut the up. You're objectively wrong on every aspect of this conversation. Like, I don't understand it. I don't understand why you can be so wrong and so confident in how wrong you are. Ain't nobody's here saying like, oh, the number one thing that Americans care about is like the ongoing. I never said that. I don't believe that. Okay. Because that is objectively not true. But according to the CBS poll, 61% of Americans opposed aid to Israel's assaulting 77% of Democrats and 63% of self-identifying moderates reject U.S. aid to Israel. 77% of the under 30 demographic opposed aid to Israel. 75% of black Americans, 66% of women, 56% of white college graduates. This is not like this is just an easy gimme. OK, it's just waiting right there. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of voters across multiple states especially when you are in margins of barely getting a victory in a lot of these key states that you have to get when you say every vote counts and then you turn around and go but not those votes well then you, every vote doesn't count that's an easy dub it's sitting right there come here dude like it's just right there dude it is right there okay it is right there easiest dub of my life okay easiest w of anyone's lives is just standing right there it's like marijuana decriminalization or legalization at the federal level it's a it's a thing that the democrats could just do tomorrow and people would be on board with it okay it's one of those things it's like it's just there and they never hit that button ever i don't know why they're so scared of hitting that button i don't know what the, the problem is i genuinely don't understand it it's like a it's like a free vote situation okay this doesn't mean that it's like the, the number one issue. Like out of all of these people that are polled, they're not saying they're not going to vote for Kamala Harris if she doesn't get this done. Okay. Nobody is saying that. But having said that, there are Kamala Harris, the closer she is associated to Biden on this issue, on a, the worse she is going to poll on this issue, the worse she's going to hemorrhage votes. Biden and Kamala Harris right now are seen as objectively unpopular on Israel. Objectively. How would you understand how interlinked, how do you understand how interlinked we are with Israel and not understand why Kamala won't break away from Biden on this law? Shut the up, liberal. How do you understand how interlinked we are with Israel and why Kamala won't break away from Biden on this? It doesn't change my opinion on the matter. She has to do this, okay? What do you mean? She has to do this, and I'm going to keep repeating why it's a good idea to do this, and hopefully someone will listen, all right? I don't know why you just, basically, what you're doing in this situation is like, I would rather be cynical and right, okay, and just, you know, not even talk about all of the major reasons for plenty of liberals that are even in this community that might have not heard the electoral calculation that I am presenting to them, okay? That is the reason why I don't talk about this from a morality standpoint when talking about Israel in terms of why the campaign should move in this direction. I talk about it as a bloodless, sociopathic electoral calculation. Why do I do that? Because there are plenty of liberals who are very afraid of Donald Trump winning the election, but they don't give a single shred of a about, okay? That's it. That's the reason why I'm doing this shatters we're doing electoral politics i don't know why some leftist shatters act so smug exactly there is i've said this since early october okay there is an electoral analysis here that favors removing the the unshakable bond we have with israel there is a state department continuation of your like american hegemonic superpower status argument to make there is a pro cia pro state department argument to make in terms of like reanalyzing our relationship with israel Okay, there is a pro Israel's continuation of the apartheid argument that I could make if need be. Like, I can make a liberal Zionist argument. 
It literally does not make sense. That is why I'm saying it is pure zealotry and fear. That is the only reason. It is pure ideological zealotry and fear. Fear of the unknown that is stopping. It's not like some secret thing that they're of that you don't know about, okay? It's not like uh, the, the Mossad blackmail operation. All of a sudden, we're going to see Joe Biden's like pigs leak because he like made the right decision or whatever. Like, no, it's not any of those things. Sometimes the truth is that simple. Ideological zealotry and fear. That's it. As a reminder, chat, APAC is not unbeatable and is not so powerful as they want you to believe they are. Exactly. They've, they've, dumped, 100, they've dumped 100 million so far. Okay. I mean, I would take a peek. Yeah, we're not going to see Joe Biden's meat anytime soon, but you already know it's big, okay? Hunter Biden's is relatively large. His brother's penis is relatively large. He probably has a fat one. Let's be real, okay? Another big hog having president who had the dropout because of his unpopular LBJ was the other one. All right. Anyway, having said all of that, let's get to Harrison Walls returning on the campaign trail. For the White House, Vice President Kamala Harris and Tim Walls hitting the road in the battleground state of Georgia for a second day as Donald Trump gets ready to blitz critical swing states. Our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce, is on the trail in Savannah, Georgia. Mary, good morning. Hey, wait, good morning. Well, the Harris campaign sees real opportunity here in Georgia. They are hoping to expand the map, put this key state firmly back in play, now with less than 70 days to go. This morning, Kamala Harris is gaining ground in the critical Sun Belt states. Harris and running mate Tim Walls boarding their campaign bus in Georgia, a state where Donald Trump has been leading. But this morning, a new Fox News poll shows Harris now up by two points. That poll also suggesting she's closing the gap in Arizona, Nevada, and North Carolina. Remember, all of these are within a margin of error, okay? All of these polls are within a margin of error. I'm not just saying this because, like, I want to be a naysayer. I want to make you like not feel excited. Everyone is doing brass summer. Everyone's lived up like this is not it's it's good. This is promising. If you are a Kamala, if you're a, a Mamala fan, okay, if you're if you're riding with Mamala, it's promising. Don't say remember 2016. It does not. No, we're not talking about 2016 here. Okay, I'm not saying these polls are in the same way that the 2016 polls were. That's not the argument here. The argument here is that they are still within a margin of error, and therefore, this does not spell a broad victory in the way that you think it does, especially when you factor in Pennsylvania, okay? Remember that. Remember that when you look at these numbers, okay? Yeah, margin of error is plus minus three. In Battleground, Georgia, a state President Biden won narrowly in 2020, Harrison Walls reaching out to rural <coughs> voters, hoping for a repeat victory. In Hinesville, greeted by the Liberty County High School Marching Band. My previous job to this was, of course, public school teacher and coach, uh, which I wear with pride. Walls leaning into his own rural roots in Minnesota. His experience as a social studies teacher and former high school football coach now central to their campaign message. The ticket then stopping for barbecue in Savannah, out shaking hands and snapping selfies. Harris, well, she can't just rely on those urban centers like Atlanta in a race expected to be so close. Trump also hitting key states targeting the Rust Belt today in Michigan and Wisconsin. I mean, yeah, this is a good this is a good way to look at it as well, for sure. Individual national polls um, love people reacting to the polls when you could just look at this holistic picture instead, courtesy of vote hub uh, that shows a b rated pollsters only okay national polls not a measure you're looking for then look at state polling instead battleground state polling averages it's still within the margin okay it's still within the margin and it is it's promising for kamala harris's campaign but you have to understand it is absolutely still within the margin of victory or defeat before heading to must-win Pennsylvania. Just because of the way votes total, most past the 270 involved PA. To win without PA, you would have to win most of the rest of the swing states. Yeah, Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, North Carolina, and Georgia. Doing that and losing PA is pretty unlikely. Yeah, there is, there is no pathway to victory where you win Arizona, Nevada, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, North Carolina, and Georgia, and then lose Pennsylvania. That'd be insane. Now here like you would have to you would have to run such a good such a good campaign in all of those other places but such a bad one in Pennsylvania I don't know how the f that would happen
Lol, is going to be the Selena Meyer elections. Stop. Here in Georgia today, Kamala Harris and Tim Walz will sit down together for their first big interview of this campaign. They have been facing criticism for not doing a formal press conference or an in-depth interview. And then looking ahead to the coming days, Harris is expected to be spending a fair amount of time in debate prep. Of course, her first face-off with Donald Trump coming up right here on ABC on September 10th, with just 12 days away. Yep, that will be a pivotal moment. And Mary, while we have you, tell us about this criticism Trump is facing about a recent visit to Arlington National Cemetery. His team accused of recording video in a prohibited area. Veteran families now reacting to this? So this video shows the president visiting some of the grave sites of some of the 13 service members who were in that attack on Abbey Gate in Afghanistan. Trump trying to highlight Harris and this administration's handling of that chaotic troop withdrawal. But filming in this area of the cemetery is prohibited just for this reason, to not politicize the military. This is such a funny thing that he did. Uh, like... He is such a clout hungry social media demon, dude. I'm not gonna lie. This is my favorite Trump story of this election cycle so far. At first, I didn't cover it because I was like, ah, who gives a sh And then I read into the details and it is hilarious. Okay. He went to the Arlington National Cemetery. That's where all the veterans are, that's where all the soldiers are. And he did that so he could, he did that so he could cut content. Where he's like, Biden is so bad. He, 13 of our best veterans. Kamala Harris are 13 of our best veterans. Okay. And he went there with the Gold Star family of like one of the, uh, one of the parents of like one of the dead vets. Right. And of course, there are like major reasons as to why you're not supposed to be doing this. Because uh, apparently, you know, there's a, there's, you, you just can't do that. You can't do a photo op at the Arlington Cemetery. You can't do a, you can't do a campaign op at a cemetery in general. Okay. But I love that the the people that work at the cemetery were like, you can't do that. And he was like, nah, it's fine. <laughs> Terry, now, some families like that of Staff Sergeant Ryan Canal say they give Trump permission. They say it's it's sad to restrict how the fallen are honored. But overnight, we heard from another Gold Star family, the sister of Sergeant Andrew Marcasano, who died by suicide in 2020 after eight tours of combat. His grave is also shown. Yeah, one of the graves that was shown in the TikTok is the dude himself. Breaking, the U.S. Army has new statement out at the incident in Arlington and real Donald Trump. Of note, they confirmed that the parties were told of the laws against political activity and that an employee was pushed aside and filing charges were on the table. Oh, my God. This is worse than when Scrub Daddy Girl on TikTok went to Mexico and scrubbed all those headstones for content. That's what I'm saying. This is my favorite genre of, like, insane TikToker uh, nonsense. Like... Trump is doing scrub daddy girl like he like it's it's phenomenal. We're going to we're going to do it. We're going to we're going to I'll show you the the uh US Army rebukes Trump campaign for incident at National Cemetery. He's a TikTok girly dude. He's a TikTok girly. Let him thrive. Y'all are everyone's against him, even the army, okay? Trump's going to come out and be like the army <laughs> and all the vets are going to be like hell yeah, brother. You're right. I hate the army. It's gay now and woke. Uh, it's so sick. It's so sick, okay? It's it's dope. I'm fully on board with this, okay? I'm fully on board with this. It's the John McCain controversy all over again. To be fair, a lot of vets hate the U.S. Army. Yeah, no, it's it's awesome. I, I First of all, as you guys know, I don't give a f about, like, uh, how this is sacrilege. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. I don't care that it's, like, um... I don't, I don't care that it's, like, considered sacrilege to, like, uh, do this sort of thing, okay? I don't. Um... But a lot of people certainly will be in their feelings about it. But it is funny as in general that Trump did this. Worst part about it is that like, yeah, he was, you know, his staff were being rude and annoying to the uh, people that work at the cemetery. That's. Reposting. Oh, they're doing it already. Reposting to to trigger the hacks at uh, at, at the army. GOP political strategist, combat wounded Marine Pittsburgh native, Chris LaSavita. The army, baby. Woo! You guys. It doesn't matter. None of this shit matters, okay? Republicans own patriotism. The primary reason for rules about filming is to preserve the idea that the military is politically neutral. They're doing a big crackdown against, uh, again, on that, at least. That's what my cousin told me. Yeah, my cousin. Yeah. Um, I get it. I, I get why those rules exist, okay? It's just funny. And no, it doesn't factor like Greg Stoker posting Biden doing the same thing does not uh, obviously factor in a similar capacity, considering that he was a vice president on May uh, or uh, yeah, considering that he was a vice president 
and not like actively campaigning or something, okay? This doesn't mean you can't literally take pictures at the cemetery, dog, as the as a person. Like Trump has also been pictured at Arlington before when he was president. The difference is during an election cycle, when you're actively trying to cut campaigning footage at the Arlington uh, uh, cemetery, then it becomes a, a political problem. Bro made a TikTok. Now, I still, again, don't care necessarily, but for all of the, uh, for all of the context enjoyers and for all of the, uh, you know, everybody does this, okay? Just, you know, something to consider that it's not the exact same equation at all. Speaking of cousin, my four-year-old saw me watching you and now she calls you that boy and your cousin. Really good news out of the Biden admin, and I hope the Kamala Harris is shouting this during her campaign stops. We don't give a but a lot of people do, and this makes it bad for Trump. No, they won't. It'll be the old, it didn't happen, and if it did happen, it wasn't that bad, and if it was bad, the other side has done worse, and if not, then free speech. Not a fan of context, to be honest. No, I'm just showing you, like, Biden has been pictured the secretary, so is Donald Trump. The difference is, like, it wasn't of campaign material that they were cutting. That's the major difference. It doesn't mean that, like, you can't film a president or a vice president uh ever at the arlington cemetery of course every goddamn uh elected representative has has had that moment in the past all right love the story though in this trump video and she says quote we hope that those visiting the sacred site understand that these were real people who sacrificed for our freedom and that they are honored and respected accordingly now the harris campaign has responded to this they suggest this behavior is just typical for donald trump they say it shows that he's only out for himself but jd vance firing back at that criticism using some charged language saying that kamala harris the sitting vice president quote can go to hell now to a growing controversy in the presidential race, and it has to do with this picture right here on your screen of former President Donald Trump at Arlington National Cemetery and an altercation that occurred on the grounds there. Bro, they made him do the thumbs up. That's crazy work, okay? When I saw this photo, when I saw this photo, I couldn't believe it. Like, that's crazy work, man. That's nasty. That is nasty. Insane pic. They're all smiling. They're smiling and they got the thumbs up over the grave of their family member. <laughs> what? What are we doing? I think, I think this genuinely shows like the idolatry surrounding Donald Trump. Okay. Like where these guys actively think, I mean, they're, they're actively more excited at the prospect of their, of, of genuflecting the dear leader than like the actual context of the situation. Dying equals L posing for a photo over dead people. W. Yeah. Oh, it's so sick. And I think, um, I think like th if I'm not mistaken, this guy, I think this guy himself too. So they were like more mad about that too. Where they literally were like, where they just like post up, they posted up, thrown the thumbs up over the grave of like a another soldier too. Like that's, that you can be seen in the photo. Isn't not reading the room kind of the Republican MO. I mean, Donald Trump is is uh, goaded at reading the room usually, but this is one of those situations where, like, he doesn't give a f At the very least, it makes it extremely clear it's a campaign thing. He's not there to pay respect. Oh, yeah. Involving his campaign staff. Meanwhile, on the other side, Vice President Kamala Harris prepares pee. for a big moment with her running mate, Tim Walls, in the battleground state of Georgia today. And our Nancy Cordes has made her way to Savannah. Nancy, good morning. This is a first for the Harris-Walls campaign. What do we know? That's right, Tony. It is the first sit-down interview that Vice President Harris will be doing since becoming the nominee. She's going to do it jointly with her vice presidential nominee, Tim Walls. She's going to do it here in Savannah, where she's also holding a rally at the end of a two-day swing through the part of the state that is typically not a target for Democratic nominees. Southeastern Georgia is Republican territory, but Vice President Harris and her running mate, Tim Walls, are rolling through anyway. Polls show Harris has pulled even with former President Trump in this battleground state. And her campaign says 35,000 volunteers have signed up in Georgia since Harris became the nominee last month. So far, she has stayed mum on the controversy over her opponent's visit to Arlington National Cemetery on Monday. Defense officials tell CBS News that some Trump staffers got, quote, aggressive, both verbally and physically, when a cemetery official tried to prevent them from bringing a campaign photographer onto the grounds. Federal law prohibits election-related activity in the cemetery. 
The Trump team insists their cameraman was invited by the family members of Staff Sergeant Taylor Hoover, and Hoover's family agrees. They all posed with Trump at Hoover's gravesite Monday. But there was another headstone in the picture, belonging to Master Sergeant Andrew Marcasano, who died in 2020. In a statement to CBS News, Marcasano's sister said her understanding was that... Yeah, he didn't... He died in 2020 by himself. It's crazy... Dude, 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 this is like... This is a crazy story. Like, we, ha we haven't even watched the TikTok yet. We've only done the commentary around it. We gotta watch the TikTok. Because they filmed the TikTok. They filmed the TikTok, dude. That's craziness. Let me see. Does anyone have it? I mean, he, he posted this. Chris LaCivita posted this. Oh.